And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored, our second half hour. Some adults are realizing they are addicted to ultra-processed foods, and it all started while they were kids. All of us. Research shows about 14% of adults are clinically addicted to food, predominantly ultra-processed foods with higher levels of sugar, salt, fat, and additives. This addiction doesn't just impact your physical health, but also your mental health. Joining us to talk about it tonight on The Factor, Dr. Abdullah Kudraf from Top Care ER in the Heights, therapist Dr. Bernadette Smith and restaurant marketer Keandre Jordan. Glad to have you all here on The Factor on Sins. And so, Dr. Kudrath, when we talk about your physical health, what can ultra-processed foods do to you? And for those who don't realize that they're eating it, give me one or two examples of ultra-processed foods. Yeah, you know, the saying is true, we are what we eat. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to choose very carefully. Now, there's processed foods, and you know, sometimes people have different definitions, but mm -hmm. the general definition is it's normal to process foods and to add preservatives so it doesn't go bad in a day or two. But ultra-processed foods has very little actual food in it. It's a lot of um, uh, synthetic chemicals and sugars. You find that in your, your sugary snacks or your soft drinks. And this is what's becoming a problem for a lot of Americans. And of course, when we talk about the impact on Americans, mm -hmm. what would be the ultimate if they had all of these ultra processed foods without a balanced diet that we all expect right and what we're seeing is very apparent you're getting nutrition poor diets and you're getting a lot of medical problems namely obesity mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes um, if and we're not doing so well as a country when we compare ourselves to other developed countries Japan for example the obesity rate is four and a half percent you can guess what it is in America. It's about 42, oh, no. 43 wow. percent yeah. of Americans have obesity. So it's a serious problem. Look at me sitting my fat ass up here. <laughs> wow. And, and they said that more than 12 percent of people 12 years and older have a food addiction. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it in young kids too. And how are they getting it? It's because they have access to it mm -hmm. at the home. So it's definitely something we need to look at as a country to see how we can prevent this development of obesity and diabetes. All right, Dr. Smith, so why do we get hooked on it? Because once we get it, we continue. We start as mm -hmm. kids, right? Yeah, so there's so many factors that go into it, right? So one, sometimes it is just not knowing um, how to create those balanced meals, and so you sometimes are just passing down stuff. So then sometimes what then occurs is we uh, create an attachment, those comfort foods, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm already salivating, thinking about the mac and cheese I'm about to eat on Wednesday, <laughs> right? And so those comfort foods, because we have have a memory attached to it and so in that it releases those dopamines and then we're trying to chase those dopamines mm -hmm. so birthday cake right happiness fats sugars all connected dopamines and then we're searching for that rush and then as he was saying with the ultra processed foods there's a lot of fats and sugars in there again releasing the dopamines so then what becomes important is to look at it from a space of okay being able, some people can do elimination, right? Elimination, I'm not gonna do it anymore, but then I think what becomes important is to look at how then do we create that balance. So maybe saying, I'm not gonna eat cake, or maybe saying, I'm not going to eat that cheeseburger, I'm going to substitute that fast food meal for something healthier, and looking at how you can do those small substitutions um, versus that complete elimination. All right. Mr. Jordan, let's bring in from your perspective. Growing up, there were no other alternatives. Yes. So I can say I'm part of the Big Back Committee, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, I'm starting to uh, learn a lot of things that um, growing up, being in a food insecure place mm -hmm. where we didn't have access to um, quality foods, uh, I'm just learning that, okay, the the food that I was eating back in the day did not contribute contribute to the quality of my health, mm -hmm. yeah. and so now knowing that I'm going through a holistic, um, you know, not procedure but a holistic approach to where I'm getting rid of those toxins out of my body, 
Um, but it's, it's like working with different restaurants and things like that. I realized that in our com in our black community, we don't have access to a lot of um, quality foods. And so the question that I w would like to know is where can we get those good foods, those mm -hmm. quality foods? A lot of us don't know yeah. because of the America food system. Right. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so. Um, it's just about educating and also letting us know where to get those types of food that, and how to that you know and, and how to yeah. prepare them. All right. yeah. We're out of time, guys, but we mm -hmm. need to follow up.